Well, Floyd, thank you so much for uh, being with me in studio today. Wow, do I ever feel heaven's heart mm. on this issue. So mm. tell me about what is happening globally from your perspective on the topic of Christian persecution. Yeah, we've seen the persecution of Christians grow over the years. I don't think it's a, a problem that's diminishing. Uh, we see that on a global scale. Uh, we see that where, where as an organization, we primarily, when we started back in the 70s, it was focused on Christian persecution under communist countries. Uh, and then as, as uh, communism began to, to fall away uh, somewhat, we saw other countries where Christians were persecuted, where they are religious minorities. And so we've seen, uh, we've seen this reality in, you know, from China all the way through to Viet, uh, through Vietnam and into India and into African nations and even South American nations where Christians are persecuted for their faith. So this truly is a global issue. It is a global issue. So how did you get involved with this? There must have been a defining moment yeah, well, uh, so my mom was a Dutch immigrant who uh, was given a book uh, from Richard Wormbrandt, Tortured for Christ, a Dutch version, and she was going into the hospital to give birth. So while she was giving birth, she was reading this book, and I was being born. So I'm never really sure how to take that. My mom's reading Tortured for Christ, and I'm entering the world. But I just see it as the Lord knew back then that he had me for this mission. Wow. So my parents then started the work uh, back then it was called Jesus to the Communist World and then changed to Voice of the Martyrs. They started the work in, in Canada. So I grew up with Richard and Sabina Wormbrandt, the founders of our ministry, who had suffered greatly uh, in, in communist uh, Romania, um, came to the West and just started this movement of uh, going to churches in, in Western nations and specifically telling them how their brothers and sisters were suffering in communist countries and how we needed to be aware of their suffering, how we needed to pray for them, pray with them, but also be a voice for them and, and, and speak out on, behalf, on their behalf uh, because it, their voices weren't heard in the West, in, in the communist countries. And of course, Jesus said that whatever we do for the least of these, his brethren, right? The, <clears throat> Uh, believers that we do right. it unto him and so the response of the believer you know it's right there in the book That's right. so when you would go to these churches I'm sure people would come to you and say okay well what can we do practically what, what points would you give them yeah so prayer is always the number one request it's the number one request from persecuted Christians Hebrews 13 3 says that we are to remember them as if we're actually suffering with them how do you suffer with persecuted Christians if you're not first and foremost really spending time to pray pray with them so I think uh, you know Christians in Canada we're speaking to the church in Canada they need to be aware of the issues uh, globally where Christians are persecuted why are they being persecuted what countries are they being persecuted in what are the what are the other factors that that tie into their persecution and that because that informs us on how we can pray and then as we pray um, I think we also then learn a lot from our persecuted brothers and sisters, especially when we realize why they're being persecuted. They're being persecuted primarily for their identity of being a Christ follower, but then also because they seek to make him known. Mm. And for us in Canada, where we're challenged in our faith, I think we can learn from our persecuted brothers and sisters to say if they're able to not only survive in persecution, but thrive in persecution, then why is the church in Canada in, the, in, this, in this free society, why is it shrinking? Hmm. Maybe, there's, maybe there's some opposition that will come our way and, and how will we then stand in it? Well, what a better way to learn from our brothers and sisters how to, how to face persecution, which doesn't come from their own ability. It's really coming from the comfort and the presence of the Holy Spirit to hmm. equip them in the midst of their suffering. Wow, um, so practically, yeah, pray, get involved, uh, understand the issues, uh, and then speak out, share what they've learned with maybe within their church circles, within their sphere of influence, and be a voice for Christians that are persecuted for their faith. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, profound. So you mentioned earlier, a few moments ago, about communism being mm -hmm. one of the main sort of contributors to Christian persecution. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about militant Islam. Mm. Um, you know, are you seeing with the, with the battle against ISIS, you know, and mm. the displacement of some of these militant Muslim groups, how is that affecting the whole dynamic of Christian persecution globally? Yeah, it, it's, it's created a, um, 
a big mess in the Middle East where a lot of Christians, ancient Christians uh, in their communities have been, have been relocated and moved out of their, out of their uh, we're talking about Mosul and, and areas in Iraq uh, where they've been displaced. Um, they're now in IDP camps and, and many of them they're not, they're not ready to go back and pick up their lives. They don't know what they'll find when they go back. Uh, their hoses could be destroyed. Um, so, uh, but we also see um, militant Islam in, in Nigeria. Um, so many people talk about what's happening with ISIS, but in Nigeria it seems to be very silent where I think more Christian blood has been shed in that country than any wow. country to date. Wow. Um, and I get almost daily reports of Christians that are being killed in Nigeria. Um, it's, it's a constant thing. Horrifying, horrifying. So in a moment here, we're going to watch a clip uh, in the House of Commons by the Honorable Andrew Shearer, mm -hmm. the current leader of the opposition. And, you know, it was in response to what happened on Easter weekend in Sri Lanka. Right. And, you know, I heard a lot of people comment on the contrast, uh, even in the global media, between what happened in New Zealand with the mm -hmm. mosque attack and this massive global outcry, mm -hmm. and then a seemingly lesser outcry with the Sri Lanka right. issue. And, um, you know, there was some you know, some questioning kind of about that and right. sort of the, the, the media narrative agendas. Uh, and I'd love to maybe talk about that mm. after this clip. And we're going to watch this clip by Andrew Shear here just in a right. second, right after this.